For decades, India's defense was dependent upon import. We bought fighter aircrafts, missiles and air defense from Russia, Rafale jets, avionics from France, aircraft engine, helicopter, missile from US, drone, radars from Israel. In fact, we were one of the largest importer of defense equipment in the world, spending billions but creating little value within our own country. But something has changed in the last decade. With the launch of Atmanirbhar Bharat, defense became the core of India's self-reliance mission. Today, India design, develop and manufacture everything from fighter aircraft to drone, warship and missile system. And for the first time ever, global investors are looking at India's defense sector not just as policy theme but as a profitable, scalable, long-term investment opportunity. Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and this is my Personal Finance Academy. I recently had a chance to read a detailed 141-page report by Goldman Sachs titled India Aerospace and Defense Growing Domestic Security Globalizing Supply where they have initiated coverage on 8 Indian defense and aerospace companies with 6 buy call, 1 neutral and 1 sell. So in today's video, we'll first explore the past, present and future of India's defense sector. Then we'll look at the 5 big structural themes shaping India's defense sector. And then we'll look at the stocks covered from Indian defense universe. But before we proceed, please note that the idea behind this video is to understand the opportunity in Indian aerospace and defense sector and identify promising listed companies in the space. But please do not blindly buy anything based on target. Make sure that you do your own research before investing your money. Alright, let's get started. For decades, India was one of the world's largest importer of defense equipment. Although there were strong PSUs like Hindustan Aeronautics, Bharat Electronics, DRDO, but private sector's role was almost negligible. Even our defense procurement was slow, R&D was limited, and indigenization, that is domestic manufacturing, was inefficient, lagged innovation and marked with delays. But in the last 10 years, government started focusing on Atmanirbhar Bharat mission, especially in strategic sectors, and defense was the core of that mission. Fast forward today, the story looks very different. Today, India manufactures everything from aircraft to warship, artillery system, drones, radar, and even missile component. What used to be a public sector monopoly has now become an ecosystem involving private companies, startup, academia, and global partnership. This slide gives a nice comparison of Indian defense capability in 2010 versus 25 across indigenous capability to strategic capability. Private sector role was non-existent in 2010 and today there are more than 400 private firms in defense production. In export, India was ranked 40th globally in 2010. Today, India is among top 25 arm exporters. And here is the most interesting part. For the first time, global investors and institutions are looking at India's defense not as a policy theme but as a profitable investment opportunity. Now the big question is, what does the next decade look like for Indian aerospace and defense sector? To begin with, Indian government is targeting exports worth 50,000 crore by FI29 against 23,600 crore in FI25. That's more than two times target in the next four years. So clearly the foundation has been laid. India's defense sector is no longer import driven, it's innovation driven. But the real question now is, what is driving this transformation? Let's break it down into five big structural themes that are shaping India's defense future. So the first big structural theme is indigenization and technology substitution. This is the biggest structural theme happening in Indian defense. The government has released five positive indigenization lists banning import of over 500 major platforms and subsystems. That means those components must now be made in India. This policy has created a multi-decade demand visibility for Indian manufacturers. From fighter jet component to radar and avionics, Indian companies are now building what was earlier imported. Now while indigenization is setting the base, the next revolution is happening in an area even more exciting. It's defense electronics and software integration. See, modern warfare is not just about tanks and jets. It's about electronics, sensor and software. From radar system and communication links to AI-based surveillance, this is becoming the new nervous system of defense modernization. But building this modern ecosystem is not possible without participation beyond PSUs. That brings us to the third big shift that is private and MSME participation. 
Earlier, India's defense was dominated by PSU, but today over 400 private firms and 13,000 MSMEs are now part of supply chain. This is creating a deep scalable ecosystem where innovation is happening at every level. Now here is something most people overlook. The defense sector does not just strengthen the military, it strengthens the economy. Because many of the innovations built for defense are now finding applications in civilian industries too. For example, radar technology that was once built to track enemy aircraft is now being used in automotive sensors for collision avoidance, adaptive cruise control and autonomous driving. The same radar system also powered drones, air traffic control and even 5G network where precision signal mapping is critical. Then there is avionics, the complex electronics that control fighter jets. Those systems have found a home in aerospace and commercial aviation industry, helping improve flight navigation, fuel efficiency and aircraft safety system. And finally, air-driven surveillance and imaging that was originally designed for battlefield intelligence is now being deployed in smart cities, border management and disaster response system. So defense R&D does not just protect the nation, it also builds the technological backbone for India's next wave of industrial and digital growth. This overlap is turning defense into a technology multiplier for India's broader economy. And as India builds world-class products, the natural next step is taking them global. Which brings us to the fifth and perhaps the most powerful driver that is export-led growth. India is already exporting to over 85 countries including US, France, Israel and several African nations. Products range from radar system, armored vehicles and drones to communication system. The government wants to make India one of the top 5 defense exporters by 2030. But the big question is, how do we as an investor benefit from this transformation? Which are the companies that are actually turning these mega defense themes into revenue and profit growth? Let's now look at some of the leading players, both PSU and private, that are positioned right at the center of this defense revolution. So first company in the list is Solar Industries. It basically started as manufacturer of explosives that find application in mining, infra and construction industries. Later it forayed into defense sector in 2010 and diversified into manufacturing of propellant for missiles and rockets and warhead explosives. Goldman team believe that solar industry is well positioned to benefit from a global shortage of energetic materials. The defense segment has an order backlog in excess of 15,500 crore of which 8,500 crore is towards export. In past 18 months, company has received defense order worth 13,100 crore. Company is augmenting its capability by making a foray into focus segment such as UV, medium and large carbine ammunition and strategic system. Solar industry is ramping up capex in the defense segment and has recently executed an MOU with government of Maharashtra to establish an anchor mega defense and aerospace project at an investment of about 12,700 crore over the next 10 years. Taking cognizance of the current order book, possible opportunities and expansion plans of the company, Goldman team expect revenue from defense segment to surpass 8,000 crore by FR29. Now solar industry has been a wealth creator in the past and at current level, company is trading at a very high P ratio. But the expectation is that between FR25 to 28, company's revenue, EBITDA and PAT would grow at a healthy CGR of 24, 29 and 25% respectively. That said, free cash flow would be negative as company would be in expansion mode. Also, solar industry has the best asset turn and ROE as compared to global and local peers. Based on all data points, Goldman team has forecasted the earning growth and arrived at a target price of 18,215 in the next 12 months. From current level, it implies a return of 30%. Now there are three Kiruskin companies' growth thesis. First is delay in defense order. If the orders are delayed, this could pose a risk on earning growth. Second is expansion and uncharted defense domain. Company's future defense capex will be in new area and if development work does not proceed at planned, there could be risk to future earning potential. And third is hyperinflation risk in international geographies like African countries. Second company is PTC industry. It was incorporated in 1963 and catered to aerospace, defense, oil and gas, power and marine industry. The company is setting up 6,700 ton per annum titanium ingot and 900 ton per annum super alloy ingot capacity and is also enhancing its casting capacity for both titanium and super alloy casting. Titanium and super alloy are integral part of an aero engine or industrial gas turbine. And PTC is one of the few players in the world to have developed single crystal blade technology used in hot part of turbine or aero engine. 
Please note that the global aerospace supply chain is already facing ongoing challenges from geopolitical conflict. Due to this, the capacity ramp up at PTC facility is expected to happen faster and believe there's an ample opportunity within the domestic defense ecosystem and PTC is the only supplier for advanced hot turbine section component. PTC share price has zoomed a lot in the past and command a very high PE multiple. But still Goldman team has a buy call on the company. It's because among all the aerospace and defense company under coverage, PTC earning trajectory is likely to be the steepest driven by benefits from capacity ramp up. Goldman team expect revenue growth at 71% CGR till FI30 and EBITDA and PAT are expected to grow at 131% and 123% CGR respectively till FI28. Based on that, Goldman's 12-month target for PTC is 24,725. From current level, it implies an upside of around 48%. The report has identified three key risks in the growth thesis. First is slower than expected ramp up of capacity. So if the capacity ramp up is slower than expected due to delay in ordering or product development, then it can impact the earning growth. Second risk is lower than expected aircraft build rate. Currently, there's a huge backlog with Airbus expecting more than 43,000 new aircraft until 2044. Any slowdown in build rate due to supply chain issue might lead to lower demand of titanium and super alloy and that might have an adverse impact on company's earning estimate. Third risk is delay in qualification. The ramp up of titanium ingot capacity is contingent on approval from global OEM. Any delay in approval can have adverse impact on earning estimate. Then third company is Extra Microwave. It has transformed into one of the fastest growing defense and space sector plays in India. There are three distinct changes happened in company over the past 10 years. First, the portion of company's revenue in domestic defense segment has increased from 30% in FI15 to more than 80% in FI25. Second, successful transition from a component and module supplier to a strategic subsystem partner. And now, Estra Microwave is on the cusp of graduating from traditional design and development of subsystem to research system level design and integration. Overall, the expectation is that Estra Microwave would grow its revenue in the range of 18-20% to 20 till FI30 to reach 2,500 crore number versus 1,000 crore revenue as of FI25. However, EBITDA margin should improve and remain at 27-30% to 30 range on a sustainable basis. Based on that, Goldman's 12-month target for Estra Microwave is 1455. From current level, it implies an upside of 33%. Now, there are four key risks in the growth thesis. First is delay in order from domestic defense segment. Second is dependence on other companies like Bharat Electronics, DRDO, Hindustan Aeronautics. Third risk is margin impact. If indigenization themes get delayed, company may focus more on export, which is a low margin business. And fourth risk is stressed cash conversion cycle. Next company in the list is Data Pattern. It is a defense and aerospace electronic solution provider where its design philosophy is centered around the creation of reusable building blocks that can be used on multiple end system that has enabled the company to develop platforms agnostic system and subsystem. For instance, company has developed products using these building blocks for light combat aircraft, light utility helicopter, as well as BrahMos missile program. Currently, Data Pattern is focusing on three vertical. Radar Electronics, Electronics Warfare, and Communication System. In Radar System, company has successfully developed nine precision approach radars for Indian Army and Navy. This segment also has significant export potential due to its cost competitiveness and completely in-house IP. For BrahMos Missile Program, company has developed fire control system and other electronic system. Company has already delivered multiple units to equip Sukhoi's 30 aircraft with BrahMos Missile launch capability. In the electronics warfare system, company has developed communication intelligence and electronics intelligence system. In communication system domain, company has developed system for land, air, and satellite program. Company's revenue and pad growth between FI22 to 25 has been at a staggering CAGR of 30% plus. For FI25 to 28, the growth is expected at a healthy 20% plus rate. And margins are expected to remain at sustained range of 38%. Based on that, Data pattern revenue is expected to reach 13,000 crore by FI28 and PAT at 3,870 crore. So Goldman's 12-month target for data pattern is 3,640 rupee. From current level, it implies an upside of around 30%. That said, the key risks for data pattern include delay in order for existing contract. So company derives more than 60% of its revenue from sale to defense PSU and other government of India entity. 
any delay in award of contract or delay in execution might have an adverse impact on company's earning. Second risk is customer concentration. Data pattern derives almost 75% of its revenue from very few customers like DRDO, then MOD, Brahmos and so on. Any loss of customer due to increasing competition intensity or change in spending pattern might have an adverse impact on company's earning. And third risk is working capital days might stay stressed at the current level of 350 days. That could result in data pattern turning free cash flow positive later than the expectation. Fifth company is Azad Engineering. It was incorporated in 2008 and manufactures rotating airfoil portions of turbine engine and other critical products for defense and civil aircraft, defense missile, nuclear power, hydrogen, gas power, oil and thermal power. The precision forged and machine component manufactured are highly complex and mission critical and hence some of them have zero ppm defect requirement. There's an estimated 30 to 48 months long process for onboarding a qualified supplier. The vendors are required to go through separate qualification process for each component that they supply. Azad has successfully demonstrated these qualities and has obtained part-by-part -part qualification of over 1700 parts and component. It would require a new entrant at least 20 years to achieve similar level of product capability. There's another major opportunity for Azad in indigenous engine manufacturing ecosystem. Azad is part of global supply chain of engine majors. The government's thrust on indigenization while co-production and co-development of engine for Tejas MK2 and AMCA platform respectively is expected to open significant opportunities for Azad. As a result, compared to peer companies, Azad revenue, EBITDA and PAD growth is expected to be at least two times higher compared to its peer as the company is relatively new player with a lower base and has enough potential to grow by 30 to 35% CAGR over the next few years. Based on that, Goldman's 12-month target for Azad engineering is 2055 from current level, it implies an upside of 25%. Now, key risk for the company is free cash flow generation might be delayed further. So, in order to sustain the stellar revenue growth, sustained capex in the business is necessary. Hence, free cash flow generation might be delayed even beyond estimate of FI35. Second risk is working capital cycle might remain stretched. Sixth company in the list is Bharat Electronics. It is India's flagship defense electronics manufacturer with a large high visibility order book, strong government backing and expanding export and product diversification. Company has more than 70 product lines engaged primarily in missile system, include land, air and naval, then land based radar system, naval system, that include your sonar and communication system, radar and fire control system, military communication, electronic warfare and avionics as part of the defense portfolio. Parent Electronics is the key supplier of any development projects by DRDO. Apart from this, there can also be positive surprise factor for the company like earlier than expected development and ordering from Project Kusha. Then accelerated development of Rudram and Astra missiles on Rafale. And third, more orders for strategic system. Considering the current and potential pipeline of order, Bharat Electronics order book is expected to reach 92,700 crore by FI28. Overall, Bharat Electronics is expected to grow revenue, EBITDA and PAT at around 15% range between FI25 to 30, resulting in revenue of around 36,155 crore and PAT of 7,900 crore. Based on that, Goldman 12 months target for Bharat Electronics is 455. From current level, it implies an upside of around 9%. Now, key risk in the growth thesis include technology misalignment. That is, change in modern war tactic through adoption of disruptive technology and warfare equipment poses a risk. Second is delay in order. Company is significantly dependent on domestic defense sector. Any delay in order from Ministry of Defense can impact earning estimate. And third risk is input raw material or component risk. Due to geopolitical tension, the possibility of supply chain disruption has increased significantly for the defense industry. And fourth is increasing competitive intensity in the Indian defense sector. Apart from this, Goldman has a neutral rating on Hindustan Aeronautics without much upside in the next 12 months. And finally, they have a sell call on Bharat Dynamics, mainly due to steep valuation. So if you conclude, India's defense story is no longer about catching up. It's about leading the next wave of military innovation, built, designed and engineered in India. And here is what investors often miss. Defense is not a one quarter story. It's a multi-decade national priority. With 75% of defense procurement now reserved from the domestic firm and record order book across the ecosystem, India is laying the foundation for a $100 billion defense ecosystem over the next decade. So the question is not whether the defense sector will grow, it's 
who will dominate this new era of Indian defense manufacturing? Now you tell me in the comment, which is your preferred pick from Indian defense sector? If you find this video useful, do share it within your circle. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.